Hello students, today we will discuss about history of molecular biology. Introduction. In its earliest manifestation, molecular biology, the name was coined by Warren Weaver of the Rockefeller Foundation in 1938. It was an idea of physical and chemical explanations of life. If we evaluate the molecular evolution within the context of biological history, it is easy to note that it is the culmination of a long process which began with the first observation through a microscope. The aim of these early researchers was to understand the functioning of living organisms by describing their organization at the microscopic level. From the end of the 18th century, the characterization of chemical molecules which make up living beings gained increasingly greater attention along with the birth of physiological chemistry in the 19th century, which was developed by German chemist Justus von Liebig and following the birth of biochemistry at the beginning of the 20th century, pioneered by another German chemist, Edward Buckner. Between the molecules studied by chemists and the tiny structure visible under the optical microscope, such as the cellular nucleus or the chromosomes, there was an obscure zone, the world of the ignored dimension as it was called by the chemical physicist Wolfgang Ostwald. This world is populated by colloids, chemical compounds, whose structure and properties were not well defined. The development of molecular biology is also the encounter of two disciplines which met considerable progress in the course of the first 30 years of the 20th century, biochemistry and genetics. The first studies the structure and function of the molecules which make up living things. Between 1900 and 1940s, the central process of metabolism was described. The process of digestion and absorption of the nutritive elements derived from alimentation such as sugars. Every one of these processes is catalyzed by a particular enzyme. Enzymes are proteins like the antibodies present in blood or the proteins responsible for muscular contraction. As a consequence, the study of proteins of their structure and synthesis became one of the principal objectives of biochemists. Development in genetics. In breeding experiments between 1856 and 1865, Gregor Mendel first traced inheritance pattern of certain traits in pea plants and saw that they obeyed simple statistical rules with some traits being dominant and other being recessive. These patterns of Mendelian inheritance demonstrated that application of statistics to inheritance could be highly useful. They also contradicted the 19th century theories of blending inheritance as the trait remain discrete through multiple generations of hybridization. Since the time, many more complex forms of inheritance have been demonstrated. Gregor Mendel, through his work on pea plants, discovered the fundamental laws of inheritance. He deduced that genes come in pair and are inherited as distinct units, one from each parent. Mendel tracked the segregation of parental genes and their appearance in the offspring as dominant or recessive traits. He recognized the mathematical pattern of inheritance from one generation to the next. Mendel's law of heredity are usually stated as the law of segregation. Each inherited trait is defined by a gene pair. Parental genes are randomly separated to the sex cells so that sex cells contain only one gene of the pair. Offspring, therefore, inherit one genetic allele from each parent when sex cells unite in fertilization. The law of independent assortment. Genes for different traits are sorted separately from one another so that the inheritance of one trait is not dependent on the inheritance of another. 
in the law of dominance, an organism with alternate forms of a gene will express the form that is dominant. From his statistical analysis, Mendel defined a concept that he described as a character, which in his mind holds also for determinant of that character. In only one sentence of his historical paper, he used the term factors to designate the material creating the character. So far as experience goes, we find it in every case confirmed that constant progeny can only be formed when the egg cells and the fertilizing pollen are of like character so that both are provided with the material for creating quite similar individuals as in the case with the normal fertilization of pure species. Mendel's work was published in a relatively obscure scientific journal and it was not given any attention in the scientific community. Instead, discussion about modes of heredity was galvanized by Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection, in which mechanisms of non-Lamarckian heredity seem to be required. Darwin's own theory of heredity, pangenesis, did not meet with any large degree of acceptance. Rediscovery of Mendel's work. The work of Mendel remained unattended and unrecognized for almost a century until the work of Hugo de Vries and Karl Korens and Eric von Chemark. Hugo de Vries wondered what the nature of germplasm might be, and in particular, he wondered whether or not germplasm was mixed like paint or whether the information was carried in discrete packets that remained unbroken. In the 1890s, he was conducting breeding experiments with a variety of plant species, and in 1897, he published a paper on his results that stated that each inherited trait was governed by two discrete particles of information, one from each parent, and that these particles were passed along intact to the next generation. In 1900, he was preparing another paper on his further results when he was shown a copy of Mendel's 1866 paper by a friend who thought it might be relevant to Dave Rice's work. He went ahead and published his 1900 paper without mentioning Mendel's priority. Later that same year, another botanist, Carl Korens, who had been conducting hybridization experiments with maize and peas, was searching the literature for related experiments prior to publishing his own results when he came across Mendel's paper, which had results similar to his own. Korens accused de Vries of appropriating terminology from Mendel's paper without crediting him of or recognizing his priority. At the same time, another botanist, Eric von Semark, was experimenting with pea breeding and producing results like Mendel's. He too discovered Mendel's paper while searching the literature for relevant work. In a subsequent paper, De Vries praised Mendel and acknowledged that he had only extended his earlier work. The Chromosome Theory of Inheritance Sutton, as early as 1902 and 1903, published two papers which clearly pointed the way to a physical basis for the science of heredity. The chromosomal theory of inheritance was proposed independently by Sutton and Bovary in 1902. Sutton is credited for demonstrating a parallel between meiotic behavior of paired chromosomes and the behavior of pairs of Mendelian factors. He could explain Mendel's principle of segregation on cytological basis, that in meiosis, one member of a pair of homologous chromosome goes to one daughter cell and the other to the second daughter cell. Mendel's principle of independent assortment found cytological proof from the fact that members of one pair of homologous chromosomes move to the poles independently of the member of another pair. Thus, Sutton argued that these 
parallels between the behavior of chromosomes and Mendel's factors are similar. He carefully calculated the number of chromosome combinations possible in gametes and combinations of factors Mendel postulated in zygotes with different number of chromosomes in explaining the result of crosses with pea plants in diploid cells. He found that the number of possible com chromosome combinations is just the same as the number of combinations of factors Mendel postulated in explaining the results of crosses with pea plants. Sutton and Bovary's arguments for this chromosome theory of heredity were essentially as follows. Since the sperm and egg cells provide the only bridge from one generation to other, all hereditary characters must be carried in them. The sperm cells lose practically all their cytoplasm in the process of maturation, as can be seen by observation under a microscope. Since the sperm contributes as much to hereditary as does the egg, the heredity factors must be carried in the nucleus. Chromosomes are found in pairs, so as the Mendelian factors. The union of sperm and egg, each with its single set of chromosomes, re-establishes for the new organism the whole number that is the two sets of chromosomes previously seen in the body cells of parent organism. During cell division, chromosomes divide accurately. This gives the idea that genes are carried on chromosomes. The chromosomes segregate at meiosis. It means that members of each pair separate and go to different cells. Mendelian factors also segregate at the time of formation of gametes. The number of chromosome pair segregate independently of other chromosome pairs. Mendelian genes also segregate independently. In other words, chromosomes obey Mendel's law of inheritance. Sutton concluded his 1902 paper with bold predictions, saying, I may finally call attention to the probability that may constitute the physical basis of the Mendelian laws of heredity. Later on, experiments by Avery MacLeod and McCarthy, as well as Hersey and Chase, proved that DNA, which is the chemical constituent of chromosomes, are hereditary material. This is followed by defining the term gene as functional units of DNA by Wilhelm Johansson in 1909. Biddle Tatum, one gene, one polypeptide theory. In further development in the field of molecular biology, pioneering work by Biddle and Tatum in 1941 linked the concept of genetics and inheritance with biochemistry. They worked on Neurospora crassa, oxotropes, which were unable to survive without supplementing the growth medium with amino acids, ornithine, arginine, and citrudine. Beadle and Tatum found three types of oxotropes requiring amino acids, ornithine, citrulline, and arginine. The prototropes were found to have amino acid arginine in their body, which was been synthesized from ammonia and sugar of the minimal medium. Oxotrop requiring ornithine for its growth does not contain arginine and dies due to protein deficiency. When supplied with ornithine, it is found to possess arginine. Oxotrops requiring citrulline possesses ornithine but no arginine. When citrulline is supplied, the oxotrop comes to have arginine. The nutritional mutant requiring arginine contains both citrulline and ornithine. It seems that arginine is synthesized from ammonia and sugar of the minimal medium through at least three steps, each requiring its own enzymes. Beadle and Tatum reason that defective enzymes are due to defective or mutant genes. Hence, genes expresses their effect by controlling the synthesis of enzymes. In 1948, Biddle and Tatum proposed that a gene controls the synthesis of one enzyme 
following which they were awarded the Nobel Prize for their work in 1958. The Central Dogma of Molecular Biology The central dogma is the process by which the instructions in DNA are converted into a functional product. It was first proposed in 1958 by Francis Crick, discoverer of the structure of DNA. The central dogma of molecular biology explains the flow of genetic information from DNA to RNA to make a functional product, a protein. The central dogma suggests that DNA contains the information needed to make all of our proteins and that RNA is a messenger that carries this information to the ribosomes. The process by which the DNA instructions are converted into the functional product is called gene expression. Gene expression has two key stages, the transcription and translation. In transcription, the information in the DNA of every cell is converted into small portable RNA messages. During translation, these messages travels from where the DNA is in the cell nucleus to the ribosomes where they are read to make specific proteins. Reverse transcription is the transfer of information from RNA to make new DNA. This occurs in the case of retroviruses such as HIV. It is the process by which the genetic information from RNA is assembled into new DNA. In conclusion, we have seen that molecular biology is a culmination of genetics and biochemistry. It has evolved from a classical form of genetics to a molecular study that involves the central dogma. The research in the field of molecular biology is ongoing and it is an ever-changing field that needs constant update of knowledge.